What's going on engineers? I got a cool video for you today. 10 things you can do with Linux that you can't do with Windows. Let's go. Number one, you can download the source for Linux. That's right, folks. You can go over to github.com slash Torvald slash Linux and you can download all 810,528 glorious commits for Linux. You can see everything that's ever been done on Linux all the way back from its inception. Now, if you're one of those people who are saying to yourself, well, this isn't really important to me. Maybe I'm just a Linux user, but I'm not a programmer or anything. So why would I even care about the source? Well, the reason you're going to want to care is because there are people who are constantly looking at the source for things like bugs and security flaws and various other matters. With Windows, it's completely closed source, which means you're putting 100% of your trust into Microsoft developers to check their own stuff and make sure it's okay. And if there's a flaw, there's no independent researcher that can uncover that flaw in the source. They can certainly uncover it other ways, but the easiest way, of course, is to look at the source. So even if you don't care about the source, know that there's a lot of people who do care, and they make your experience better as a result. Additionally, in addition to the Linux kernel being open source, almost all software on Linux that you get from official repositories are also open source. You can go get that source as well. Number two, you can install updates without rebooting your machine. This is a this is a game changer for cloud environments because imagine if you have a Windows server, you upgrade software, and now you got to take your whole thing down and then boot it back up, and then now your users have downtime. With Linux, you can update almost anything without a reboot, and for kernels version 4.0 and beyond, you can even update the kernel in place. That's super sweet. Of course, on the Windows side, anybody that's used Windows for any amount of time knows that a lot of things you do, it immediately pops up and says you must restart your computer for these changes to take effect, and that's Windows. Number three, you can plug devices in without worrying about finding and downloading drivers. The only time this isn't true is with highly specialized devices, and what makes this possible is because the whole point of the Linux kernel is to connect hardware to software. And in the Linux kernel, there's been, according to my source, 16,000 unique developers across 1,400 companies working on Linux. And a lot of what they're doing is they are people from companies that have hardware, and they're writing their drivers into Linux. And that way, when people use Linux, it's just automatically there. It's not an extra step to go out and find the drivers. They're built into the kernel. Of course, on Windows, you buy a new printer, you hook the printer up to your computer. What's the first thing you do? You go to the printer's homepage, and then you go to support and drivers, and you download the right driver and all the other stuff. On Linux, you plug in the printer and you're done. And one additional note about contributors, there's so many contributors in the Linux kernel that GitHub has an infinite symbol next to the contributors. There's not e It can't even render the number of people that have worked on this project. Number four, you can run Linux from a pen drive, CD, DVD, or really any kind of medium. On the keychain that has my car keys, I also have a pen drive. And on that pen drive is the latest version of Xubuntu, just in case I need, ever need Linux for something. On Windows, there's no such thing. There's no, there's no such option as a Windows Live CD. Number five, you can run Linux for literally years without rebooting, and it will not degrade in performance because Linux is ultra-stable, it has way less memory fragmentation, and it simply doesn't become slower over time. And I'm not even kidding when I say years. I have a production server right now that has a 1,002 days uptime. I've, I've never rebooted this thing, because I can make all the updates on the fly, I can update the kernel, and it, it runs just like it did 1,002 days ago. For one reason or another, you're just simply not going to find that kind of uptime on the Windows side. Number six, you can run Linux on almost any hardware. And when I say any hardware, I'm referring to both different types of hardware as well as hardware from various date ranges. There are fully functional Linux installs that are in some case less than 32 megabytes in size. So go into that closet, dust all the dust off that old computer from 1993 and breathe new life into it by putting Linux on it. You just you can't do that with Windows. As Windows gets newer, it becomes more resource intensive and the minimum requirements go up. But with Linux, you have distributions that are extremely small and extremely huge. And you can pick the one that you need for your particular application. 
Number seven, you can fix broken Linux installs with a live CD, DVD, or pen drive. Additionally, you can even fix broken Windows installs with Linux in some cases. The reason this is possible is because the Linux kernel runs entirely in memory, so you can use a CD or pen drive or DVD to load that kernel into memory and then go into a chroot environment on your broken system, and then you can use that broken system as if it were functioning. And then you can take whatever action you need to get that system working again. On Windows, you have to go through the Windows system repair whatever process that is. And if that doesn't work, well, reinstall Windows. Number eight, you can update all of your software, often with a single command. Unlike CentOS and Red Hat, you run yum update. On Ubuntu, xUbuntu, and so on, you run apt-get upgrade. But on Windows, you either use the built-in updater for the software, if, if such an updater exists, or you go back to the site to download a newer version. Oh, and by the way, maybe you got to pay money now for that update. But on Linux, type any type, update, and you're done. You can even set it to run once a week if you want and update your software automatically. Number nine, you can move a hard drive from one Linux machine to another. This is largely made possible by the fact that all the drivers are built in, so moving it over, it, it, it doesn't matter. It just it sees all your new hardware and it just works like it was in the previous machine. On Windows, not only will it probably not work, but Windows will see that you have different hardware and then suddenly your copy of Windows is now non-genuine and they want you to pay them more money. Number 10, you can customize quite literally anything. You can customize fonts and icons. You can download themes. There's even Windows and Mac themes if you want to feel right at home. You want a custom boot animation? You got it. You want to customize your taskbar with whatever? You got it. You want to put your taskbar right in the middle of your screen and then take a second one and put it up and down so it's blocking all your view? Well, you got it. You can definitely do that. On Windows, some customization is available, but it's not near the extent of Linux. And here on Engineer Man, you know we always go above and beyond, so number 11, you can install software without worrying about viruses and malware. Now this isn't to say that Linux is virus and malware proof, it's just to say that it's a lot harder for viruses and malware to get on your system. And that's due to two things. Number one, it's harder to escalate privileges on Linux for just a normal user. And number two, most of the software that you download for Linux comes from official repositories, and those are guaranteed to not have any kind of malicious software or viruses. Additionally, things on Linux don't auto-run like they do on Windows. So on Windows, when you put in a USB key or a disk or something like that, if there's an auto-run thing in there, it's going to just auto-run the stuff. And that's not true of Linux at all. This also implies that there's no antivirus software needed on, on Linux. And of course, that saves you, in some cases, money. And it also saves you the performance impact of running such software on your computer. And we're done. That's 10 things plus one bonus thing on things you can do on Linux that you can't on Windows. Hopefully some of my viewers watching are getting slowly convinced that they should try out Linux. So if you've decided at this time that you'd like to get started, it's very easy. You can download VirtualBox from the first link, download Xubuntu from the second link, create a new VM, select the ISO that you downloaded from the second link, boot it up, and then follow the instructions on the screen that you can get started with Linux. And it's totally commitment free. If you decide that you hate it and you don't want it, you can just, you can delete the entire Linux install and then you can delete VirtualBox and it's like it never happened. However, I think you're going to find that you really like it and that Windows is just not necessary outside of gaming and really specialized software that's not available on Linux. If you have any questions about the video, let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to chat more about Linux, come to my Discord server, link in the description. And there's a Linux channel there. I'm always on, and you can chat with me about it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.